And lemurs are fantastic at jumping. And they need to be because they jump from tree to tree in the forests where they live. The best lemur jumpers can jump 10 meters, which is almost as long as a bus. Incredible. There are so many brilliant animal jumpers. Let's jump to Namibia in Africa. Living in a big group is a good way for animals to stay safe. Coming through. It's also a great place for a youngster like this baby springbok to learn all the things it needs to know. Like where to get a drink when it's hot. And what to eat when it's hungry. Yummy grass. Or perhaps a tasty bush. It also needs to learn to stay away from animals like this cheetah because they like to eat springboks for their dinner. Quick, everyone, run away. Ah! But there's one lesson that no youngster needs any encouragement to learn, because it's something that every springbok loves to do. And that's spring. And when one starts to bounce, Everyone wants to bounce. Boing! 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 <laughs> this springy jumping is called pronking, which means showing off. And when you can pronk like this, why not show off? <laughs> Uh-oh. It looks like rain stopped play there. Anyone got an umbrella? But don't worry, as soon as the sun comes out again, it'll be time for another pronk. Young Springbok learn to jump like this when they're only a few weeks old. And it's not just for fun. Pronking can save their lives because it's a spring box way of saying to any animal who wants to eat them, there's no point in chasing me. I'm too fast and too strong for you. But it can be fun too. Now, chameleons live up in the trees, so they're very good at climbing. And this one's about to climb onto my hair. Where are you going? They have five toes that are grouped together, three on one side and two on the other. And on each toe, there's a sharp claw. So they use those claws to grip onto the bark. Isn't that right, Kai? Isn't he great? There are some really cool climbers living in all sorts of places. First, let's go to North America. Black bears love trees. And they love to rub their backs on them too. Ooh. There are plenty of trees to choose from in these forests. And they're not just good for back rubs, they're great for climbing too. This black bear mum has two little cubs and they can't wait to start climbing. That's because many of the trees in the forest have yummy nuts and berries at the top. And bear cubs love tasty treats. So now it's time for some climbing lessons. The first thing to work out is which tree to climb. How about a small one? Oh, no, that's not right. Whoops, neither is that. Don't worry, there are plenty more trees to try. How 
How about a big one? This tree is called a red pine. It looks perfect for climbing because it's got lots of branches sticking out. That bark's a bit flaky, though. Better try somewhere else. What about these cubs? They're climbing a tree called a paper birch. Its bark is very smooth, so that's no good either. Much too slippery. Oh dear, climbing isn't as easy as it looks. But once they find the right tree, there'll be no stopping these cubs. Their strong, curved claws are perfect for gripping, and black bears are super strong, so they make expert climbers. They don't always get it right, though. Don't worry, he's OK. And if all this climbing tires you out, you can always have a nap halfway up. She's not even two years old yet, but she's taller than me. Giraffes are the tallest mammals in the world. And their legs are so long, it looks like they're on stilts. And you would think baby giraffes have a hard time of taking their first steps. But when they're born in the wild, it only takes them half an hour before they're standing up. And they can walk from just a day old. She's incredible. For some baby animals, just standing up can be tricky. First stop, Kenya in Africa. Look at these elephants. Aren't they magnificent? You see those big ears? That's how you know they're African elephants. African elephants have the biggest ears in the world. Elephants are great mums. They have really close families. An elephant family is a herd. Look, it's a newborn baby, an elephant calf. She's only a few minutes old. Incredible. She hasn't even stood up yet. It's hard standing up when you're as heavy as an elephant. So Mum's there to lend a helping hand. Or a trunk. Thanks, Mum. Time for a nice drink of milk. Yummy. She'll get milk from Mum until she's three years old. She's mastered standing. What about walking? Whoops, steady. There's a lot of elephant for a young one to control. I think she's getting the hang of it. All the grown-ups in the herd will help take care of this young calf. It's like living with your aunties all the time. Trouble is, a little knowledge can be a dangerous thing. Now she knows how to walk. She wants to explore. Careful. You mustn't leave the safety of the family. Because when the family gets ready to go, you have to go with them. Come on, you can do it. It's pretty tough being a newborn elephant, but Mum will always be on hand to help you get over life's stumbling blocks. It's over to Australia next. The most comfy place to hit a ride is in a special holdall called a pouch. G'day! And kangaroo mums have one each. It's like a built-in baby carrier. I love kangaroos. They've got those fantastic back legs. 
They're huge and they bend the wrong way. That's what makes them really good at hopping. Hop, hop, hop. It's a really good way to get around. And kangaroos need to be good at that because they live in Australia. And Australia is huge. Kangaroos are easily the biggest animals to get around by hopping. They don't just use those wacky legs. Without those tails, they'd be falling all over the place. Kangaroo babies are called joeys. Really, all of them. Not Tom or Dave or Peter. Joey. As soon as they're born, the joeys climb into mum's pouch so they can grow bigger. But kangaroos aren't the only animals with a pouch. This is a wombat. She's got one. And the honey possum. They're only half as big as a mouse, but they still have a pouch. And koalas. They've got one too. Lots of people call them koala bears. But they're not bears. All these animals are called marsupials. Marsupials are the only animals to have a pouch. And the best known of all is the big hopping kangaroo. Hang on. Kangaroos jump everywhere. So why don't the babies jump out, I hear you ask? Well, it's because Mum has a special muscle that keeps her pouch shut and her joey safe. So it's a bit like a seatbelt, really. A pouch may be really comfortable, but getting out takes a bit of practice. There you go. Oops, oh, be careful. This joey is not very fast now, but when it's bigger, it'll be faster than an Olympic sprinter. Oi, watch out! And it'll be able to leap really high. How high? Well, if we were playing football, it'll be able to jump right over the goal. Whoops, keep practising. But while it's still small, it'll stay near Mum. Because the really great thing about her pouch is you can hop back in whenever you get too tired from all that hopping around. Ah, thanks, Mum. It's called a python. Now, they don't have legs, so to get around, they slither. And they slither using these fantastic scales which grip the ground. And they have very strong muscles in their tummy to help them move forward. All over the place, wild baby animals are on the move. First up, let's take a trip to Tanzania in Africa. Here's an animal that's very fast on its feet, but blink and you'll miss it. Uh, what? Hey, where did it go? Ah, there she is. This is a Sengi, sometimes called an elephant shrew. I can't think why with that trunk-like nose. She's caring for her baby, which means lots of feeding. Drinking milk can be pretty tricky with such a big nose, though. Her baby is only a few weeks old, but like all Sengi, she's born to run. And already, she's almost as fast as Mum. Their powerful bat legs make Sengi one of the fastest small mammals in the world. To help her speed around, she's even built her own racetrack. Meow. And it's the perfect place to go hunting for tasty bugs. Gotcha! To make sure nothing trips her up, she has to keep her racetrack clear of twigs and leaves. Go on, get out of it. 
It's so important, she spends half a day every day doing this. Imagine having to tidy your room for half a day. Boring. It's worth it, though, for a Sengi, because as well as helping her find food, a clean racetrack also helps stop her from becoming food. This monitor lizard has its eye on our Sengi. Good luck, Mr Lizard. I hope you've got your running shoes on. Oh, talk about fast food. The monitor lizard is much bigger, but our little Sengi is agile and knows every twist and turn of this racetrack. Um, you can stop running now. It looks like the poor old monitor lizard has run out of puff. <sighs> well done, Sengi. Ali is a baby alligator, or hatchling. Now, alligators get around by walking, running or swimming. Now, this one's only small, so he can't run very fast. But when he gets bigger, he'll get faster. And he will get bigger, because did you know alligators never stop growing? When they're in the water, they don't just use their legs to swim, they use these fantastic tails as well, a bit like a fish. And in the water, they can hold their breath for four hours, which is really handy when they're waiting for their food. Getting around's a big challenge for little animals. First stop, Tanzania in Africa. Some animals have taken moving around to a truly epic scale. These are wildebeest. But you can also call them gnu. One animal, two names. I know, confusing, isn't it? They live together in huge groups called herds sometimes up to a million animals. And it takes an awful lot of grub to feed all those mouths. So the wildebeest are always on the move, looking for fresh grass to munch. But how do you keep up with the herd if you've never even stood up before? This little wildebeest calf has only just been born, but already its mum is getting ready to move on. It'll have to learn to walk very quickly if it doesn't want to get left behind. Luckily, baby wildebeest know how to stand up all on their own. For a while, at least. That's it. Come on, keep trying. It takes a human baby almost a year to stand up. But these clever calves can do it in just three wobbly minutes, which makes them one of the quickest animals to get up on their feet anywhere in the world. And once they're up, there's no stopping them. Hee <laughs> Wildebeest can run as fast as a car, up to 50 kilometres per hour. And running that fast is a lot of fun. Hey, hey, hey. Now the calf can join its mum on the search for new grasslands and be part of one of the largest groups of animals on the planet. Coming through, coming through. I just hope the wildebeest at the front knows where he's going. Now we're off to Thailand. Birds aren't the only animals who can fly, you know. Apes can too. Well, maybe they don't fly quite like an albatross, but when these lar gibbons start swinging through the forest, it certainly looks like they're flying.
But instead of super long wings, they've got super long arms. This is a gibbon sanctuary in Thailand, and it's home to six-month-old Sherpa. Today's a big day for him, because it's the first time he's going out to explore the forest. Don't worry, though. He doesn't have to do it all on his own. Mum and Dad are coming, too. That's it, Dad. You lead the way. Oh, and here comes Mum. But where's Sherpa? Ah, there he is. It's always a little bit scary when you try something new for the first time. Let's see if Mum and Dad can persuade him to come out and play. Come on, you've got to try it sometime. Come on, Sherpa. You can do it. Yes, you did it. A quick hug from a proud dad. And then he's off to try out some forest flying. Brilliant. It looks like Sherpa's a natural. That's some nifty branch work, mate. And if he stops to watch Mum and Dad for a bit, he might learn a few new moves. Yep, no one can fly through the trees quite like a gibbon. With their long, lanky arms and extra bendy wrists, they're the treetop super speeders. And it won't be long before Sherpa can fly through the forest as fast as Mum and Dad. First stop, Antarctica. This super streamlined swimmer is a Weddell seal, and she's exploring an icy underwater world. And if you think it looks cold down here, well, it's not much warmer up on top. Ooh. Seals love the water, but they're mammals, which means they have to come up to breathe air. Here she comes. Pop! Her pup has been waiting for her on the ice. He's only a few days old, so he hasn't been exploring with Mum yet. Ah, oh, I think he's pleased to see her, though. The Antarctic sea ice where these seals live is one of the coldest places on Earth. Seals don't mind the cold, though. They've got waterproof fur and a thick layer of fat to keep them warm. And if it gets really cold, well, you can always use Mum as a windshield. Ooh, there's even warm milk on tap too. Perfect. But this pup can't stay on the ice forever. It's time to go exploring. Ooh, it's cold when you first get in. Mum makes sure there's a nice big hole in the ice by scraping the ice with her teeth. Ooh, that must be cold on the mouth. She needs to do this every day so they don't get stuck on the ice. Oh, it looks like hard work. Now it's time for the little pup's first ever swim. It's a bit scary. He's going to need to be really brave. Come on. That's it. 
Things look very different down here. Oh, I think he wants to get back out. Come on, little guy. You can do it. Here he comes. Ah, oh, he's done it. This is just the first of many diving trips this little seal pup will make with his mum whilst he's learning to catch fish. But for now, he can just enjoy exploring this beautiful underwater world. <laughs>